So here we are at SHOT Show 2016 in the Vortex booth. We got Ryan, and we come here to talk to Ryan, and uh, didn't think he even knew who we were, and what do you know, he's been he's been trolling around on the on the group a little bit. Uh, hey, Long Range Shooters of Utah, Ryan. Uh, this is the new Razor AMG. Um, this is a long, a long coming project from Vortex Optics here. This is the first and the only 100% US made rifle scope. Everything from the O-rings to the fasteners, the anodizing in the glass, everything is 100% US made. What do you got to say about these guys in the group and uh, their conversations that we've had recently about the uh, where things are made? Well, you know, I don't think they had any idea that you were you were watching all that. We're unfold. there. We want you to know we are watching. We are listening to your requests. It's very important for us. We take our customers very seriously. And to answer the call for a U.S. made optic, we finally uh, we finally were proud to release this this year at Shot Show. Um, and thank you all for your feedback. We love hearing it. Uh, it's great. To, it's great to know that you guys are watching us as closely as we're watching you. Um, so a little about about the optic here. We went a little different than say our four and a half to twenty seven or our three to eighteen Razor Gen two. We went from a thirty four millimeter tube down to a 30. We scaled down the LTEC turret system. You'll notice they are very similar. There's still a lift lock turret both on the windage and the elevation. Um, we excluded the rev indicator though. We took a poll of the top PRS competitors as well as some other long range experts and we said hey guys do you think we need a rev indicator? We're trying to save a little weight and they said absolutely not. Don't worry about it. You know overall it's probably not a big deal. Um, so we were able to save a little size and a little weight there but we didn't really sacrifice any capability. On the MRAP barrier we're looking at 28 MRAD internal adjustment. So this thing, even for a 30 millimeter tube, is going to have a ton of adjustment. For you guys that are shooting the fast 730s and 6.5s, this thing will get you out to where you need to be. We've got a brand new reticle this year. This will do it no justice. This is our EBR7 reticle. Um, take, a, take a hint, I guess, from our EBR2C with a little input from the PRS shooters um, and some guys that are shooting a lot of movers. Um, the EBR7 is optimized for just about any shooting condition out there. Windage grid in the lower left and right hand quadrant in the optic, great little piece. A couple new features as well, we've got this locking or the locking diopter here. So rather than having a fast focus that could, you know, with a flip cap on, get rotated and you lose your reticle focus, we've got this, you know, more traditional locking diopter that's very secure. Once locked, it's snug. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, you know, you, you know, if you're switching shooters, if you've got two guys behind the gun, you may have to find an adjustment there, but it's a quick lock and a quick counter tension, no problem. Um, we're still illuminated with our trick little pop-out illumination there. Uh, 11 stages because you got to turn it to 11 for all you spinal tap junkies and it just tucks away. Good to go. Um, 50 millimeter objective, like I said earlier, 30 millimeter main tube. And for you guys who are a little concerned about the weight of the Gen 2 4.5 to 20, because of, of that we, we took heed in that advice. This is 20 ounces lighter than the Gen 2 4.5 to 20. 20 ounces. Um, that's a whole scope lighter. That's a whole scope yeah. lighter. Uh, we did not sacrifice any quality or ruggedness. This thing is as Good to go as a Gen 2 4.5 to 27 is. Um, they're both tanks, they're both bulletproof. Uh, expect to see these shipping summer this year, summer 16. Uh, and hopefully, we get some feedback from you guys. We know that you know what you're doing, so we'd love to hear what you think. It's good looking. Yeah. I think you uh, took the feedback and you're going after the right part of the market. What about price point? Where are we sitting price, price point? point is going to be just the same as our Razor HD Gen 2. You're going to see an MSRP of around $33.99. Street price is going to be in that 26 dollars range. Um, like I said, shipping around early summer, mid summer. Uh, and hopefully, another long range shooter of Utah near you. Yeah. Why would I want to go with this over the Gen 2 if the price point's pretty close? That's a very good question. I mean, are they getting rid of the Gen 2? Gen 2 is going nowhere. They're still one of the most sought after rifle right scopes uh, in, in that class. Um, there on the market, really. I guess if I was going to make an argument for one or the other, if I was shooting something at extreme long range, the Gen 2 would be my choice because it still has a little more adjustment. 33 is turtle, 29 and a half X turtle with the 3 and a half turret. Um, the Gen 2 is still going to have a little knot up on the, uh, on the elevation side of things. Um, you know, if weight is not a concern, if weight is something that you're after, if you're shooting a high recoiling rifle, or if you want something super stable, uh, you know, the Gen 2 is probably know where it's at there. But uh, if, if you're looking for a little lighter weight build, if you've got a class restriction and some sort of long range shooter, you know, 
the whole class or the competition that you have that says you have to stay under a certain weight, or if you just don't want a 48.6 hour rifle um, definitely look towards the AMG. Uh, optically, they're very favorable. Um, get a chance to look through an AMG, you will be very, very, very pleased with what you see. We've taken a different approach to the, uh, the optical system with this, and uh, it's brilliant. It is simply brilliant. It'll take your breath away when you look through it. So, a little white lighter, a little trimmer. Um, you can mount it a little bit lower to the bore on a lot of rifles because of the dimensions of bid scale down because we like to a 50 millimeter objective. But again, we don't want you to think that you're giving anything up with this rifle scope. This thing is still ultra long range camera. Ultra -line. What's good? What's AMG stand for? Advanced Manufacturing Group. Um, so it's our company, we've got a great group of guys uh, that have uh, been able to kind of segue themselves into this uh, this new group of engineers that, that focus on special projects like the AMG. Uh, we can walk, you know, having everything in the house is applied here. You know, the best manufacturing processes, uh, the best sit down meetings, and, and uh, share the best coffee to come up with stuff. Like this. So, um, you know, we're, we're still going strong with the entire line. This is just a new. Uh, a new approach or a new route that we're taking for some things just to see what we're capable of doing. And, and we hope that this AMG definitely uh, definitely illustrates that to the consumer market. It's good looking. Yeah. So we're wrapping up doing our video here with uh, Ryan and uh, talking about uh, you know some of his time spent on Long Range Shooters of Utah, taking a look at some of the comments and conversations that go on about different optics. And he had an interesting bit of uh, insight, a pro tip, if you will, that they wanted to share with us. So we take a lot of calls at Vortex Optics and we, we, we uh, you know, pay attention to the subject matter of those calls and figure out how we best can serve you guys. And then, of course, we watch the Long Range Shooters of Utah. We see what you guys are up to, and, you know, providing feedback between yourselves or amongst yourselves on our product. And one of the common things that we hear, not not necessarily associated with vortex optics, but with, with every rifle scope, is uh, failure to trap repeatedly, return to zero after dialing up or dialing out, um, erratic zero, or you know that shotgun pattern, so to speak, where if you're on the range with the rifle scope, whether it's new or old, and you're shooting it, for whatever reason, it's, it's erratic. It'll move and then all of a sudden it'll jump way over. Um, if we had to uh, really you know, put this to pen and paper, I would bet that 9 out of 10 calls that we get that are technical related are ring torn related. And it's uh, a really commonly overlooked thing. I know it's something that until it, it had happened to me, I had uh, never really given it a thought. Ring torn it was the culprit in so many cases, and over torn to the same You know, you've got a multitude of ring manufacturers out there, and they all have different torn specs. We open up a pack. You might read 15 to 18 inch pounds. You might read 25 to 20 inch pounds. Some are now recommending up to 60 inch pounds. Um, now, what we found at Vortex, uh, you know, by testing this, is that 15 to 18 inch pounds with a very concentric ring, such as this, uh, this is a new Precision QR mount, by the way, um, available in zero or 20 MOA cans. You might have to tell us about that while you're at it. Uh, what we found is that with good concentric surfaces mating up to the the main tube in your rifle scope, you don't need any more than 15 to 18 inch pounds to secure the rifle scope. Um, definitely don't want to use a thread locking compound of any variety. Um, as when applied wet, it'll actually cause a wet torque, a uh, uh, misappropriated torque value, where you could set your wrench to say 15 inch pounds and put it on there, and it may run it up 8 and 12 inch pounds higher because it's a wet torque so it's a thread. So if you're seeing something funny, if you're dialing out your rifle scope and dialing it back and you're finding yourself a couple pounds too high or too low, uh, or if you're trying to make an adjustment just, just to get your initial zero and you're finding that your click value is either maybe uh, far exaggerated or far reduced from what it should be, check that ring tool. I don't know how many animals I've written off as junk and how many rifles I've got. Wow, ah, what a piece of crap. Uh, that I probably over torqued the rings because I thought, hey, these things are supposed to be tight, right? Uh, so check that out. If you guys have any questions, of course, give us a call at Vortex. We're happy to help anyway we can. Um, on the mount, we've got a couple of new things in that department. Uh, this is our new precision uh, cantilever mount. Now, it's on a bolt rifle, so it's probably not as appropriate. For you guys that got the new Ruger RPRs and for guys that are shooting gas guns uh, or similar platforms, this is the mount for you. Um, this is our, our, we follow the same lines with our precision match rings. I mean, arguably one of the most concentric ring uh, 
uh, systems on the market, and we've just made it cantilever form, so it's an appropriate height for utilizing on guns like the RPR, or the gas gun, the R10 platform, etc. Uh, we have it in uh, zero MOA or 20 MOA, and 30 millimeter and 34 millimeter tube sizes. Is there a QD version yet? Well, no, not yet. We do have the Precision QR mount, which is a mount that, uh, that we've had now for about a year and a half. Um, ultra precise, uh, ultra concentric ring, um, 30 millimeter only, no cantrip available. Um, if I can make a recommendation for a QR version with camp, you can go check out the friends at Overall Engineers. What was that one again? Bobro Engineering. Huh. Yeah, quick release. Uh, yeah. A lot of guys in our group love the uh, American Defense Manufacturing yes. ADM mounts. Yep, we, uh, we run them for all. In fact, I still have ADM mounts to this day on my three gun mounts. Great products. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Well, thanks again, Ryan. Appreciate hey, it. Pleasure. Thank you, guys.